God doesn't need it to look like we're winning. He doesn't need <laughs> Come that. Come on, dude, that's so we, good. We want that. It makes us feel better about our own PR. He yeah. doesn't need it to look like he's winning. Bro. He doesn't need it to look like we're winning. He is working his plan and it is for his glory and for our good. Welcome to another Portions Podcast. Wow, what an amazing season we find ourselves in as we're entering into this holiday season on our natural calendar. I really believe that our podcasts in these upcoming weeks are gonna be significant for you. And today I'm so blessed, Nathan, that you're with me, man. Thank you so much. I, it, it's, I love having you on and I just feel like we're not, we're not even doing anything but sitting here and talking when we're It's together. fun, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for the invite, Scott. Oh, it's just so great. And we're already up to Genesis 37. Uh, the portion for this week is Genesis 37, 38, 39, and 40. And maybe just for our listeners and our viewers, you can just recap about where we are, set us up, because Joseph's about to have a dream yeah. that's going to change the course of his life and the nation of Israel's life. Yeah. So uh, why don't you just bring us up to up to speed? Last several portions where we've got the the story of Jacob and Esau. They're they're kind of when they meet each other again after all the fallout from earlier in Genesis. Uh, we experience that. Then you have really some genealogies that kind of yep. catch us up to speed on where we are in the story. Of course, both Rachel and Isaac have died in this process. And now we're getting ready to hear, as you said, some really significant dreams that Joseph has that sets the not only the destiny of his life, but the course of really history. Yeah. Uh, uh, this, this portion is called Vayeshev in Hebrew. And what is that? It literally means... And he dwelt. And he dwelt. So and this is talking about, right, Jacob comes from the first verse of Genesis 37. Yeah. Now Jacob lived in the land of his father. Jacob has how many children? He's got 12 sons, right? Yeah. Yeah. 12 sons. And typically, when we think of the one who gets the blessing yeah. or the one on whom is the burden and responsibility for the family, it's usually the oldest. Right. Correct? I'm, I'm just thinking when Samuel went to anoint a king, yep. he goes in to Jesse's house right. and he sees the oldest come and says, surely this must right. be the easy, one. Easy to do, right. Easy to do. Yep. Interestingly, none of them were the ones that God qualified right. as king. The, the one whom God saw was a man after his own heart, it was the youngest. Who wasn't even invited to the table, which Who I think is wasn't even right. invited to yeah. the table. Yeah. We have kind of an interesting thing going on yeah. here because, and, and, and it just, it really blesses me just from the outset of this, Nathan, that when God looks on whom he's gonna bless, it's, he, doesn't, he doesn't qualify us based on earthly qualifications. Right. He sees beyond natural giftings. Right. He sees beyond natural birth order. Right, right. And he's looking for the heart that's really gonna... Well, that's, that's really what scripture says, right? I mean, man looks on the outward appearance. Yeah. God looks on the heart. Right. And so we see that really throughout scripture, yeah. the most unlikely, the, le the, the one you're like, well, it can't be him. Including, well, that's the one. Right, yeah. including, including the nation of Israel. Of course, right. The least, small people, not a lot of influence. And God's like, yeah, that's what that's, I'm going to use. That's, that's the one. Right. So this is the heart of our father. So Joseph has a dream. In his dream, uh, his brothers are bowing down to him. Yeah. <laughs> and being Joseph, he kind of spews the dream. Yeah. Not a lot brothers. of wisdom there. Yeah. Yeah, not a lot of yeah. wisdom. And the brothers get a little bit ticked. Yeah. Genesis chapter 37, they plot against Joseph. Yeah. Joseph gets thrown in a pit. And why don't you pick up the story from there? Yeah. So part of the whole thing of him getting thrown in the pit is his brothers don't like him. Okay. <laughs> right. So he's the youngest and he really gets taken as the favorite. Now, we also have to say Joseph, uh, didn't help in the wisdom department either because he made it very clear that, uh, you know, his, excuse me, Jacob made it very clear that Joseph was his favorite, right? right? So right, Jacob's right. not operating a lot of wisdom. Joseph's not operating a lot of wisdom. And I, I read in a Midrash, and, and I'm not exactly sure how this all bears out, but it was fascinating to me. Explain, explain what a Midrash is. Yeah, so like a, almost a commentary or an exegesis on scripture that uh, rabbis would do on the Tanakh, okay. Old Testament scripture. Right. 
Um, that's a, a layman's understanding of how yeah. a midrash would be. Um, so this being some commentary thoughts on this passage that would say this coat of many colors that everyone thinks about when you think of the Joseph story, you think, okay, coat of many colors, you think of Broadway, you know, an amazing Technicolor dream coat, which is not necessarily biblical. That's So, you know, you think about that, but this Midrash just referenced that there's some understanding in the Jewish community that this would have been a coat that both Rachel and Leah would have worn in their weddings wow. when they got married, and it would be it would be a family heirloom passed down, and it would typically go to the oldest, mm. right? Just mm. like that birth order thing. Yeah. But because of Reuben's sin, and because of what happens there, he's displaced as the oldest in in Jacob's eyes, and he gives it to Joseph. So now, with that backdrop, again, I don't know how accurate all that is, but that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. As to why the brothers would hate him. Not just because he's the youngest and he's the favorite, but he's being paraded as the favorite, even with the family heirloom. The, fam- the family heirloom. <laughs> yeah. And it stands out. Yeah, it's a huge it, thing. It stands out. So the brothers get a little bit ticked yeah. by Joseph's dream and they plot against him yeah. and they sell him as, as like a slave. I mean, I can't imagine. But what do they, they take that family heirloom, right? Yeah. The coat. Yep. And they pour blood over it, they rip it apart, and they bring it back to the Father. Yeah. And they say Joseph's dead. Think about this. I was, I was reading this earlier, Scott. I was thinking again. So, right, Jacob, the father, some deception there, right, in his younger days. What yeah. does he use? He uses a goat skin. Come on. Right? <laughs> wow. To trick Isaac that, hey, this is, I'm really Esau because I'm hairy, you know, which that's a whole weird thing yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, the, his sons are using goat's blood to trick their father. Wow. Think about this. I don't know what all that means. All I know is, man, it's just good to tell the truth. It's, <laughs> it's just good to it's tell the truth. It's good to tell so the now, truth. I they've love got it. this whole scandal, and you know, Jacob is just heartbroken to the point of almost death. Yeah. This is not only his youngest son, it's his favorite son. And as far as he understands, not only is he dead. You know, it's been this tragic accident. Wild animals have killed his youngest son. And this is what he understands as a father. And what has happened, as you said, is the brothers have actually sold him to some Ishmaelites that are coming through. And they're they're done. They're like, okay, well, that's that. You know what's kind of crazy? I've never thought about this before. Literally, this is the first time I'm thinking about it. That God allows Joseph to be put in the home of an Egyptian that is going to cause the deliverance of his people. Oh man. And then generations later, when Joseph is forgotten about, Moses Whoa. is brought into the home of a significant Egyptian yes. leader because God is always looking to redeem. Always. He's always looking. So we might see this in the natural. Oh my gosh, Joseph is now it captive you know, with these people who are antithetical to God. right? And God is in the background setting all of this up so that Israel can survive and not only survive, but be thrust into yes. their destiny yes. generations later. Yeah, kind of- no, the, the role Egypt plays throughout scripture is fascinating, even in the life of Yeshua right. later on, right? So we'll get there later, but I mean, the role it plays is fascinating. And even what scripture says in the book of Revelation about Egypt, there's some fascinating thoughts. But yeah. that being said, it is so awesome that God, Genesis 12, He, he, he loves Israel, He pulls them apart as a, as a special possession, to redeem all the nations. Perfect. Right? Yes. And so it's not, this is my favorite, I hate everybody else. Right. I'm starting here for the purpose of everyone's benefit. I and love I, that. And we see that even how Egypt plays a part. Yeah, and it's interesting because later in the story, Joseph looks at his brothers and said, you meant this That's for exactly evil, right? right. That's but right. God. That's right. But God, so I, I just, I really wanna encourage you today, those who are listening and those who are watching, sometimes we may find ourselves in positions that seem antithetical to what God has actually promised us. But if we can have faith that the Lord's purpose in our tough situation is ultimately for his redemption, everything changes. And I just almost knocked an olive off of my olive tree. That's okay. Tree. That is okay. You're just expressing it. So, so Joseph, <laughs> Joseph's in Egypt yep. and in a crazy way, there is success. I just want to focus in 
uh, specifically on the podcast today to Genesis chapter 39. Yeah. Um, and I want to, I just want to look there because I, I, I feel like the theme for today, Nathan, is that God's presence brings success. God's presence brings success. I love it. Look at how many times it says that Jacob was successful. Verse two, the Lord was with Jacob, so he became a successful man. Verse 21, I think. Uh, but the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him, and he gave him favor in the sight of the jailer. Verse 23, the jailer did not uh, supervise anything under Joseph's charge because the Lord was with Joseph, and whatever he did, the Lord made to prosper. The Lord was with Joseph. Yeah. And I just, uh, I was looking at a couple of things thinking to myself, wow, here in the midst of a of of a rough situation, yeah, for sure. the Lord was with Joseph and God's presence trumps everything. Yeah, so he's made a slave, right? He's sold into slavery. Yeah. Then because God's with him, he climbs the ladder as it were yeah. and is now in the home of one of Pharaoh's you know, officials, a yeah. captain named Potiphar. And man, he has, as you say, favor. And we can look at situations and say, well, you're a slave. How yeah. do you have favor? You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's the, the Lord doesn't need things to look amazing on the outside, that yeah. inward heart thing. Yeah. He says, I'm going to prosper you where you are. And it's part of a bigger plan that Joseph has no idea of. We get the benefit of knowing pages. I mean, this is, this is years of people's lives, you know? Right, right, we get right, to read right. in a couple of pages, but now he's postured. Uh, in Potiphar's house as the captain, he's got this favor, and the Lord even uses this situation. It's crazy. So I've, I felt like the Lord had me ask myself three questions, and I, I wrote them in the margin of my Bible. One, will you value the presence of the Lord? Hmm. Two, will you rightly steward all that the Lord puts in our possession? And number three, will you tenaciously resist the enemy. And I, I just wanna, I wanna go over the three, yeah. the, just the, really quickly, that. the three scriptures. One, will you, will you value the presence of the Lord? If we view the presence of the Lord as primary, yeah. as the most important thing in our life, remember later on, and we'll talk about this in a future podcast, Exodus, I think chapter 33, God told Moses, you go into the land, but my presence isn't going with you. I'm gonna send angels, I'm gonna do all this. Yeah. And, and Moses says, no, no, no. Yeah. If your presence doesn't go with us, I'm not going. And then he makes a statement. Moses says, what else will distinguish yes. us as your people? Yes. And Nathan, I just think the presence of the Lord, the Lord was with Joseph. He became successful. The Lord was with Joseph. If we minimize the value of God's presence with us, Come on, man. we can succeed even as Moses would have succeeded sure, with sure, angels, sure. but we would have missed out on the ultimate uh, joy and, and fulfillment in life, and that's having God's presence with us. It's so true, and we see that Joseph has learned this through his process, is learning this, as many yeah. of us are still learning in our own journey. Yeah. But when when Potiphar's wife makes a pass at him, uh, his response is, look, my master has not withheld anything from me except for you. But then he says, how could I sin against God? Come on. Right? Come on. Yeah, I want to honor my master and all. But I mean, he's a man, right? He, there's this, uh, obviously, part of his wife had to be beautiful. He's, a, he's an official, right? This, he says, I'm not going to do this to God because of the value of the presence. Like, I know God's presence. It's what's marking me with favor. I can't sin against the Lord and do this wicked thing. Amazing. Well, then let me jump to question three, only do because it. you just, yeah. question three was, will you tenaciously resist the enemy? I think. That's it. I think that when God's presence is with us, mm. that the enemy is going to tenaciously come after no question, us. No question. To to not only interfere with that presence because that presence does bring success. Wow. Right, the Lord was with Joseph; yeah. he succeeded. So the one way that the enemy can can rid us in the natural of success mm. is to separate us from God's presence. And what separates from the presence of God? Sin. Sin, Sin yeah. separates. My three favorite words in this entire passage yeah. is from Genesis 39, verse eight. 
Let's go to 37 verse 7 first. It came about after these events that his master's wife looked with desire at Joseph and she said, lie with me. And here are the three words, Nathan. Hmm. But he refused. Yeah. But he refused. He, that, sh- that should be, I'd love that written over my tombstone. Uh, but he refused. Not refused God, sure. but refused every time the enemy came in. Listen. Man, so good. We, let's say we, we, we start a fast. Yep. And we're gonna, we wanna get close to the presence of the Lord, which doesn't happen, by the way, by works, but sometimes we'll, fasting is scriptural. We'll say, okay, I'm gonna set myself aside yeah. to fast and pray. Do you know the first thing that's gonna happen during your fast? Oh, I know from firsthand experience. <laughs> <laughs> Food that never looked good for you almost becomes like tenaciously desirable. I never get invited to the best restaurants until I declare <laughs> I'm on a fast. Isn't and then that, someone's like, look, I really feel in my heart to bless you. Isn't that Let's amazing? Let's go to the Capitol Grill. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Lord says, eat, what put, eat, eat what's put before you. It's like all these things. You, yeah. We, we will. It will be tested. We will justify in our minds yeah. why it's okay. Come on, man. It's true. But. He refused. So good. But he refused. So the first question, will, will we value the presence yeah. of the Lord? Second question, which was the third question, will we tenaciously resist mm. the enemy? And the third question, will you rightly steward all that the Lord entrusts to you? Look at this. Back up just to verse 4 of Genesis 39. So Joseph found favor in his sight, became his personal servant, and he made him overseer of over his house and all that he put in his charge, which goes back even to your comment about how he dealt with Potiphar's wife. Wow. <clears throat> he was living in a house, overseeing a house, and had every opportunity to, to take put stuff in his totally. pocket, hide, totally. hide it for himself. Totally. Think about his people who were not in Egypt. Yep. No, he stewarded rightly, even to the point of refusing the onslaught of a beautiful woman who, and, and it says, bro, day after day, it's like day after day, she kept, she kept coming in, lie with me. Now it happened, verse 11, one day that he went into the house to do his work, and none of his men in the household were there. She caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. He left his garment in her hand and fled and went outside. I'm I'm blown away by this. Here, Joseph values the presence of the Lord. Here, Joseph tenaciously refuses the enemy, and here Joseph rightly stewards everything that's put in his charge. And what was his reward for that? What was his reward for that? He's imprisoned. Yeah. He is imprisoned. I mean, <laughs> I'm just thinking, it's like, here we are, we're living for the Lord, we're doing all the right things. Yeah. And now we find ourselves in a prison. I it just reminds us, Scott, just because you honor God and do what the Lord tells you, yeah. doesn't mean it's going to appear successful in the eyes of people. Right. Right. Because very commonly, we're just flesh and blood. We're humans. It's so easy to feel like, well, Lord, I, I, I was faithful. I was faithful in this house. And I resisted all these horrible things that would dishonor you. And yeah. my reward? Yeah. Right? Right. And the, but the truth is, God was with him even in prison. Even in prison. And we have to be reminded of whatever we're walking through, you know, us personally, those watching and listening to the podcast, um, it doesn't have to, God doesn't need it to look like we're winning. He doesn't need <laughs> Come that. Come on, dude, that's so we, good. We want that. It makes us feel better about our own PR. He yeah. doesn't need it to look like he's winning. Bro. He doesn't need it to look like we're winning. He is working his plan and it is for his glory and for our good. And I'll just throw this in here and I, as, a, as a little nugget of thought. Do it. Notice through this portion, and we don't have time to develop it, how many times a cloak or the clothing is a theme in this portion. Wow. His multicolored coat, the coat that he's wearing, Potiphar's wife tears from him, wow. and it's used to accuse him. Yeah. Right? You keep going. We even think if we, we skipped a little bit just for time's sake about uh, is it Tamar? Yeah. And the cloak she wears to veil herself, pre- presenting herself as a prostitute. 
The clothing motif through this whole portion in biblical studies, it's always fun. When you see something show up over and over, it's on purpose. There's yeah. a reason. So just for those reading this portion, pay attention to that and see what the Lord might show you. Do you have any any thoughts on the reason? Uh, it's more fun to leave a teaser. So ah, I'm just going to plant that seed okay. and say stay tuned to the Portions Podcast. <laughs> Come on, stay tuned to the Portions Podcast. Friends, thank you so much for listening today. Nathan, this was amazing. And um, I would, I'd love for you just to pray yeah. for those who are watching and listening. Because look, sometimes even... On our natural calendars, sometimes the season can be miserable and dreary. Some people who are um, who are tuning in, maybe they've lost a loved one. Maybe they're struggling with um, with finances. Sometimes the season that's so joyful and quote unquote merry for some is dismal for others. But what if God has us in our prisons? Mm so that he can be glorified, so that in the midst of our prisons, we can be praising, so that not only do our shackles fall off, Acts chapter 16, but everyone who's imprisoned. I believe, bro, I, I just really believe that that the Lord wants to encourage those, especially in the season. So why don't you close us out in prayer? Yeah, let me pray. Father, we just thank you for your word that is truly life to our bodies and health to our bones. God, thank you that your word is powerful. It divides soul and spirit. Lord, it is powerful. So I just pray today for each person watching and listening that God, they would be encouraged today that you see them exactly where they are. You do not despise them where they are. Mm -hmm. And God, you are working for their good and for your glory. And I just pray that you would encourage them to put yeah. one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. God, that that they would not fall backward, but if they've got to, if they've got to fall, fall forward just to skin their knees mm -hmm. going uphill, God, mm -hmm. knowing that we are going to press in to your presence, knowing that you are working out something glorious that we do not fully see in this moment. Give us faith for that today. And I pray that your word would just come alive to us in this season in a greater measure measures so that we would be carriers of this great hope we have mm -hmm. in you, especially in Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Thank you for your hope that you give to all. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Nathan, thanks so much for joining us. Friends, if today's podcast was a blessing to you, would you consider sharing it on your social media platforms with friends? Send out um, our uh, link so that you can download and friends can download these podcasts. They're for free. I love you. I bless you, and in this season, may you and your house be blessed.